Jesus describes the good shepherd. I mean, he says, uh, I am the good shepherd, but he doesn't actually say that yet. He begins by simply describing, by painting the image of a good shepherd. And in Israel, the shepherd was known as the one who provided the image for what a king should be like. So that when we hear that uh, there is a good shepherd who will lead his people, as the prophets talked about, God will appoint a shepherd. He was talking about a king. Uh, the shepherd in Israel was not necessarily a religious ruler. The shepherd in Israel was the king. And the king precisely after the image or after the manner of King David. Because you remember, when David was anointed king by Saul, uh, by, I'm sorry, by Samuel, to succeed Saul, Samuel went to anoint him, and he went to Jesse, and there's all his sons, and he says, you know, none of these are it. None of these are the anointed. Do you have any other sons? And Jesse says, yeah, I've got one out tending the sheep. Remember that? And so Samuel says, go get him. And so he came, and he says, he's the one. So the shepherd is the king specifically after the manner of David, who is called and anointed by God to be the king. And David is the one to whom God makes the promise. Your throne will endure forever. Your throne will always have someone seated on it. Now, David then, after him succeeded Solomon, and Solomon began very well, but toward the end, things crumbled. Uh, he was very wise, but the thing is, is he tried to rely on his own wisdom instead of God's wisdom. And his own wisdom ended up allowing the kingdom of Israel to split and then to crumble. And after that, the kings weren't so good, even though they sat on the throne of David. But eventually... God says, I will appoint one who is a good shepherd. I will appoint one to sit on that throne. And so when Jesus comes then and begins to describe the good shepherd, he's recalling to his disciples, he's recalling to the Pharisees who are listening, God's plan for how it is that he will lead his people. And the shepherd does not sit behind a desk, right? <laughs> the shepherd is not issuing rules and mandates. The shepherd is one who knows his sheep, and Jesus describes it, and I'll have to take their word for it, but people who have studied in the Middle East and people who have lived in the Middle East say, this is how the shepherds actually do their job, <laughs> right? Is that they don't drive the sheep, they don't have dogs for the sheep in the Middle East in that culture. They spend a lot of time with their sheep and they simply call to them and the sheep know their voice. And a shepherd knows when all his sheep are there and when he's missing some. He knows that because he spends a lot of time with his sheep. And he leads and they follow. Now that takes some time. That takes some training. Maybe because the sheep do that from the very beginning. Um, we were in, I'm trying to remember where we were. I think it was in Italy. And there was a shepherd and he had several sheep with him, and they were walking through an, an olive orchard or an olive grove. And as they were going through there, uh, we saw this. One of the sheep was down on the ground, and the shepherd was tending to the sheep. And then he reaches it, and he pulls out a lamb. <laughs> so we saw a sheep got to give birth. We didn't know what was going on until he pulled the lamb out from the sheep, and that sheep gave birth there. So you can bet that there he began to tend to that lamb with the mother, right? Give that lamb to the mother and have to help to tend to that lamb. So that lamb is going to learn that shepherd's voice from the very beginning. And then, so the sheep know the shepherd's voice. They can also come to learn the shepherd's voice. And we know what this is like in our own human life, right? How many of you, you'll... You'll be in some place and there'll be kids playing, right, and making a bunch of noise out at a party or a park or whatever like that. And then all of a sudden, one of the kids uh, lets out some kind of a different sort of noise and one of the parents gets up and goes over immediately. That's my kid. Well, how do you know? There's all those voices there. There's all those, you know, all that noise going on. How do you know that's your kid? And it sounded like that kid was having fun to me. I didn't. I, but the parent knows, knows the difference. 
And so we know that in our own um, experience. And when it relates to animals, we're not animals, we're not really sheep, right? But uh, the Lord uses this image. We can even know this, but how many of you have dogs or have had dogs, right? So that dog knows who is not yet at the door, don't they? <laughs> right? They know whose car is coming up the street. <laughs> they know who is coming to the door. They know, they know. They recognize the sound of their master or someone else in the house, and they act accordingly. Maybe for some of you, the dog gets up and waits at the door, and maybe for others, the dog just sits there. <laughs> right? But in any case, they know. And so we know what it's like, that, that sounds that seem common or sounds that seem like they would not be noticeable are known to those who are listening, to those who know the sound of the voice or the sound of the person. And so Jesus here describes that shepherd who knows the sheep, the sheep, he, he calls them, he calls them by name, he knows them all. He knows when they're missing. And then they hear his voice and they follow him. This is the image of the king of Israel. This is the image of David the king. And not just David the king, but David the king perfected. David had plenty of sins. He repented well. His heart was after God. He, he was a man after God's own heart. And so he repented well. But David had plenty of sins. But the heir to David's throne is Jesus Christ. And he comes as one who is like David, who is an heir to David. He's actually of David's lineage, right? And so he's the actual heir to the throne in any earthly sense. But he's also the son of God, and he's David without sin. And so when he looks at the other, uh, the Pharisees and those around him, and he says, you know, those who come through the fence or try to entice a different way. They come and they, they come to steal. They come to rob, they, they're, they're brigands. And the sheep will behave accordingly. What is he talking about? Well, the Pharisees were living in a time where there was an absence of power. The only person on the throne was a pretender, Herod. Herod was not the legitimate king at all. He was imposed there by his own convincing of the Roman authorities that he should be that. He wasn't even uh, fully Jewish. He was partly Jewish, but he wasn't even fully Jewish. And so he, um, he was the pretender to the throne. He had no right to it, except that Rome had conquered and Rome placed him there. So Jesus, the real heir to the throne, comes and he says, you know, others will come to steal, to take from. They come because they want to rule over but the good shepherd comes to speak to the sheep and to call them and to lead them to safety. The good sheep, the good shepherd even lays down his life for his sheep. He will behave for the sheep's well-being, even when, especially when there is danger. And so the Pharisees too were living in that time where there was an absence of power and they were doing their best to try to teach to try to get people to follow the law of Moses and to, uh, to follow the law of God. And they could do that, they could teach, but they didn't have authority to rule over because they weren't of the lineage of David. And so Jesus comes in and says, okay, thank you for teaching, but the real heir is here. The real shepherd that God has appointed to sit on the throne of David is here. And of course, he says his kingdom is not of this world. So the kingdom of God is for this world, and it is in this world. He brought it. Jesus Christ is the presence of the kingdom of God. So his kingdom is for this world, and it is in this world. But it is not of this world. It is not like other kingdoms in the world. And so it does not use force. It does not use economy as a way to coerce or to call. It uses this, the way a shepherd knows and calls to a sheep, each one by name. And the sheep then follow him. And so even though we're not sheep, right? I hope we're not anyway. Sheep aren't very smart. Even though we're not sheep, the Lord calls to us and he respects our freedom. 
The Lord doesn't push himself on us, doesn't coerce us, doesn't try to manipulate us. He doesn't get anything out of that. The Lord calls to us in such a way that we can listen and hear and respond. And we have all, I hope, have, have had one or hopefully many experiences in our life where the Lord has called to us and we have known it's his voice and we have begun to respond with our life and we have begun to follow him. And sometimes then we, even after following him, we wander off and then he calls again and we say, oh, that's my shepherd's voice. And so we go back and we follow him again. The Lord respects our freedom in that. He calls us to what is right. He calls us to, to him, to himself, to goodness, to truth. And he will many times come and rescue us from when we get ourselves into trouble. And, not, and the rescue isn't always fun. But it's good because it brings us back to him. But nevertheless, he respects that freedom that we have. Years ago, uh, our family, we were, we were uh, friends with a, a family who it was interesting. Uh, we got to know, we got to know a, a man, Neil Anderson, and he, had, he was a Baptist minister and he had all kinds of uh, degrees in psychology and theology and philosophy and all this stuff. And my mom got to know her sister pretty well, and so she was very well educated. Well, she fell in love with and married a cowboy. Chapo was his name, is his name, I suppose. And uh, he, when he was young, he didn't learn to read, but he says, I came to know the Lord, and he says, I took my Bible out with me on my horseback, and he says, the Lord taught me to read by reading the Bible <laughs> on horseback, right? And he had, Chapo had this real great sense of the Lord in nature and had a closeness to him. And I remember he said to us one time, he had a great wisdom. He says, you know, he says, the Holy Spirit is a gentleman. He'll come and he'll call to you. And if you don't come, if you don't answer, he'll just ride around the mountain again. <laughs> and when he comes back around, he'll call to you again. Doesn't force himself on you. Doesn't try to manipulate you. He just calls to you. And that's the way the Lord calls to us. So what voice are we listening to? <laughs> There's lots of voices. The world's full of noise, right? When, when we talk about struggling sometimes to live our faith or find time to pray or even find time to go to mass, uh, some people struggle with that. And I say, well, you know, in the world, everybody and everything wants a piece of you. God's the only one that's not trying to take it by force or by coercion. God's the only one that's not trying to take from you. He says, come to me and receive. Come to me, I'm ready to give. Come to me and find peace and find rest and find who you are. It's a difficult walk sometimes, but you'll know who you are and you'll know you're with me. And so many times we have to find a way to quiet the voices in the world enough to be able to hear God calling to us so we know where to go. When we hear voices of uh, famous people or television, you know, I hope you turn your television off once in a while, right? I go to families once in a while and their television's on all the time. Don't do that. <laughs> Give yourself a little peace and quiet in the house, at least sometimes, right? But we hear voices from the television leaders, famous people, athletes, uh, scholars, uh, what do you call them, experts, right? We hear all these people calling to us and they're, they're speaking to us, they're trying to somehow use their position as a way to have authority over us to tell us something that we should be hearing, that we should be listening to, that we should be doing. And the Lord is the whole time calling to us, calling us by name. And if we're ready to listen to him, we can follow him but we have to make that time to hear his voice. And just like we know from recognizing the voices of our friends or our loved ones or your children, right? We know that if we spend time with the Lord, if we read his scriptures, if we pray the prayers, we come to mass, we spend time in quiet with the Lord, the Lord will teach us his voice and we will come to know it 
and then we will recognize his voice when he calls. And so again, Jesus is this king. He's the real king of Israel. He's the real heir to the throne of David. And David was given the throne to rule over the whole world. And Jesus does rule over the whole world, all of creation, in fact. But he doesn't do so in such a way as to take anything from us. He does so in such a way as to call to us and to wait for us to respond. And so the Lord says, what kind of shepherd are you following? What kind of shepherd are you living your life to prepare yourself to follow? I am the good shepherd. I call to my sheep, I call them by name, and they know me, they know my voice, and they follow me. 